Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. The brand new iPhone SE 2020 is finally in the office and I'm going to share with you guys obviously my initial impressions, uh, some of the main unique things that I'm really looking forward to checking out on this device. Uh, of course, talking about all the features, all the things that make it unique and of course where is the heritage coming from. Lastly, testing out that IP67, uh, basically water and dust resistance that we have on this device. This is TK, let's go ahead and check out the brand new iPhone SE 2020. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we have new videos on the channel. The iPhone SE 2020 is a second iteration of the original iPhone SE. Uh, that device obviously is still going, people still are able to use it and it's still receiving updates. Um, my buddy Juan Carlos Bagnell has the iPhone SE and of course still receives the same software update as the one that's installed on the brand new SE 2020. So that's partially what we really love about Apple is the ability of actually continuing support for devices over time. Uh, and of course this kind of just paints the picture of how the SE 2020 will survive in the years to come. Uh, the starting price point on this device is $399 and that's because of where they're able to basically uh, source the, uh, I would say, the historical uh, inspiration for this device and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, now, so the 64 gig model is the 399. That's the one that they are basically advertising and that's the one I picked up. I picked up the product red one mostly because of the contributions that they do out of the proceeds there but also because of the color red it looks actually unique compared to the other two options that we had. Uh, but the main thing that you have in there obviously is to go up to the next level is 128 gigabytes and about 50 bucks and of course the price goes up a little bit more. It's not really a $400 price when you're considering the fact that 64 gigs is actually something that it may be just too little for us to actually consider specifically on an iPhone. So if you're thinking about getting the iPhone SE, I definitely recommend you go in first and foremost with the 128 gig model. Don't go with the 64, mostly because of the storage limitation and of course is the fact that you cannot expand the storage on this. Now, as far as the inspiration of what we're getting here, this is pretty much a straight copy exterior, the exterior aesthetics of it, of the iPhone 8. So if you've used the iPhone 8, if you've seen the iPhone 8, and of course, if you see even the iPhone 7, the iPhone 6, you see a lot of the, basically the tried and true design of the iPhone that Apple has perfected over the years, that actually Apple is capable of producing at a very, very low price, which means this device can actually still be profitable to Apple, even though it sells at $399. Uh, some of the other thing obviously here is that they put in the latest chipsets, the A13 Bionic, and that's something that they're able to produce. And because this is the current year of this chipset, meaning we see this with the 11, the 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, this is something that they're able to produce again at a mass quantity and they're able to control the price on this. So again, another benefit to why they're able to produce a device like this at this quality. Now, using the same panel as we've seen with the 8, uh, using basically the Touch ID as opposed to the face gestures, IPS panel, all of the little, I would say compromises, the tailored experience that they have with the SE, brings it down to that 399 magical number. And the reason behind that is because they're trying to basically hit a sweet spot. $400 is a big number in the US, we like to play the numbers game. So $399 makes it sound like it's a 300. So it definitely sounds a lot cheaper than a 699 uh, iPhone or a $1,000 iPhone. But it also gives you the ability of getting into the iPhone ecosystem or the iOS ecosystem at a much more uh, th a lower threshold that you have in the past may have skipped. So if you went into a, a retail store or even went into, let's say, your carrier store, you've always looked at iPhones as being 700 plus like, uh, type of devices and you've seen other devices that sell for less. Now the SE, with the fact that we have it as a second iteration, which means we are going to see more of this device, this should be actually a really good example of why people would be able to consider getting into iOS at this price point. And the experience from what I've had, and I, I'm honest with you guys, I haven't had the device for over 24 hours. Um, I've been on a couple of uh, live streams just talking about how the experience has been. Overall, very positive. Uh, the images that come out of this device are very nice. It's smooth. It's, it's basically what you'd expect an iPhone experience is at a smaller phone factor. This 4.7 inch display is pretty much the smaller factor. It's a smaller device, smaller battery. Um, and of course, uh, that's some of the things that you want to consider when you're thinking about this device in the long term, that uh, if you're used to using bigger phones, the bigger iPhones, the 11, the 10R, or even any of the other devices that Apple has been releasing lately, the SE is definitely a different step or a, a step in a different direction. But I don't think Apple is trying to convince you, the 11 Pro Max owner, to go back and say, look, I don't want that phone. I want to go down to the SE. This is intended for somebody that wants a smaller form factor, still wants to get the great Apple and iOS experience, access to Apple and iOS experience ecosystem. So basically HomeKit, uh, Apple Watch, all of the stuff, Bluetooth connectivity, all of the things that you normally would love to have out of an iOS, uh, an iOS device. 
at a much lower price point to start. And if in the long term you do want to upgrade, let's say you do want to jump over to the 12 or the 13, depending on the year that you're in, at that point you're already comfortable and you've already kind of invested your time in this ecosystem and it'll be a natural progression. So that's really where I feel like all of the main specifications there. Um, initial impressions of the first 24 hours are actually obviously very, very positive. Um, I did want to basically do my standard water testing video that I normally do for you guys. And uh, generally, obviously, in, my, in the past, my son and I would go to the pool and we'll do a pool video for you guys. But due to the current situation, I cannot go to the community pool that we have here and I cannot basically give you that experience. So what we did here is I did a couple of things that I wanted to share with you guys. First and foremost, I did run a time lapse, uh, basically testing it. I put it in water and I basically submerged it, started the time watch or the stopwatch for 30 minutes to give you guys an experience of does this device survive being in the water that long if you forget it you jump in the pool somebody pushes you in the pool somebody splashes you with water you should not have any problems uh, in the past i did actually a video uh, with my son on the iphone 8 and the 8 plus and this is pretty much the heritage that we're getting there both of these devices are ip67 rated so for the most part i'm showing you guys some b-roll there and of course i'll link the video in the description below in case you'd like to be able to basically see how that experience is and you should be able to enjoy that because for the most part that's what you're getting here um, the other tests that I did want to do also, of course, I want to show you guys, uh, how does this actually react? Can you interact with the device in the water? What are the, you know, is there going to be false touches? Does the camera stop? Can you record video, take pictures, all of those things. Uh, first and foremost, not that, not that big of a problem. My main thing would say is if you're going to put in your SIM card, make sure that the SIM tray is inserted flush. So make sure that it's all the way in so that the water seal around the SIM tray is actually very nicely snucked in there. Uh, once you have that, Getting it in the water is pretty simple. Putting it in, taking it out, not a problem. Uh, keep in mind that it is not rated to be basically deep diving. This is just basically if you go in the pool, you're in the shower, all of those things will, nor will work normally for you. The next thing I wanted to also share with you guys is does the video's camera work underwater? And of course, as expected, it works perfectly fine. Um, as long as you start the video before you put the phone in the water, you're perfectly fine. Uh, it unfortunately, touch sensitivity on the display basically goes out the door the moment you put it in the water. So there's no way to interact with the device other than using the touch ID button, which basically is the home button, or using the volume keys to be able to initiate the camera. So start the video, put it in the water, it works great. If you wanna be able to initiate, let's say even a slow motion video, uh, dropping in that, and as I'm showing you guys right there, this is like a little bit of a, a drop in the water. It looks really nice, and I love the fact of how they did that. It works great. Uh, taking pictures in the water, not that hard, it's very simple. All you have to do is open up the camera, make sure it's sitting on the photo option, not the video, put the phone in the water, and then using the volume rockers on the phone, you're able to initiate the picture, be it the back sensor or the front facing sensor. So if you wanna take a picture of somebody else or take a picture of yourself, it's gonna work perfectly fine. Uh, so all of these things are obviously not a problem. And of course, the phone survives being in the water for over 30 minutes. So uh, I think the IP67 holds it holds true to what we expected and what we saw with the iPhone 8. And it's definitely something to keep in mind. But I also want to make sure that you guys are aware. Do not put the phone in the water if there's any crack damages. If you drop the device and the, the integrity of the device has been compromised, do not try putting your phone in the water. Uh, it should be fine, obviously, in the rain. It should be fine in basically just a general mist of water. But again, if you have any damage on the display or the body of the phone, do not do that. And of course, you should be able to get a great experience with the iPhone SE. Uh, I'll be doing some more content on this device. Of course, give me, let me let me know in the comments below, of course, what you'd like me to focus on. Uh, my main comparison, I think I would say, is literally the Pixel 4a or the Pixel, sorry, the Pixel 3a or the 3a XL. Those are the two devices that I feel like fit in the same realm of what this device is trying to do. I don't feel like comparing this to a higher, more expensive phone. It's not trying to beat the iPhone 11 or the 11 Pro. It's not trying to compete with the Samsung S20 or S20 Plus. This is not a phone that is trying to do that. To compare it with something like that, uh, for the most part, I, it is entertaining to watch, but you wouldn't go into that video thinking, oh my God, this thing is going to beat it. It's not going to happen. Expect that 399, some compromises are done. We don't have dark mode. We don't have any other additional lenses. So this is a quick sample test of the front facing camera on the brand new iPhone SE 2. Now the maximum resolution that we have here is uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second. We don't have 4K 60 the same way we have on some of the other iPhones. And of course the sun is straight in my face. Now on the other end, the back facing sensor can actually shoot 4K 60 frames per second. And that's mostly because of the fact that we have the A13 Bionic chipset here. This chipset is obviously the same processor that we have with the 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. So this should not be any surprise. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any other sensors. So it means we don't have any wide angle lens or telephoto. For the most part, single camera and of course, 4K 60 frames goodness. Um, uh, the speaker actually, speakers are also pretty good.
good. Uh, the display is very nice and vibrant. It's an IPS panel, not an OLED panel. Uh, and of course, Touch ID is as fast as we can expect it. So a lot of things to love about the iPhone SE 2020. Um, like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video.